Last of it, third in a series of three on partial fraction decomposition. Okay, I'm ready. It's about how we um, break it down. Oh, uh, this is a linear factor. So when I unadd these fractions, I'm going to have a, a constant, which is one degree less than that linear factor. X plus one. Okay, and then I'm gonna add to it. Wait, wait a minute. That one has degree two, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna be looking for something that's degree one right above it. Mm hmm. I guess this is our all in moment, poker players. Oh, okay. Um, B, X plus C. Here we see this is linear, one degree less than that denominator, <clears throat> which was not factorable, by the way. Yeah, notice that there aren't any factors of two that add to be nothing. Yeah, um, so it doesn't factor. So we can break it down like that. Okay, why is there a two there? That should be another constant, say three. <clears throat> now mind you, let me just take you to this scenario before we go further into that problem. Uh -huh. If I had had something like um, um, five over, let's get something irreducible. You're irreducible x uh, to the fourth plus x minus one. All right, I'm pretty sure that doesn't factor, but hey, we're making it up on the fly. Okay, if I was gonna do that, this is degree four, sure. Say I couldn't factor that into um, anything lower, then I would have something degree three. So here, this would be a x to the third plus b x squared plus c x plus d okay all over that denominator mm-hmm right i would need some other factors in there what am i doing i'm trying to illustrate i'm trying to illustrate sure we couldn't decompose something that already has only one denominator right it's already freaking simplest one um but right this is how it would break down. Oh, uh, what if you had had mm -hmm, similar situation? Something like this. What if you had five over x squared plus two squared? Yes, now you have repeated non-linear factors. Mm-hmm, okay. So then this is a x plus b all over, mm -hmm, multiplicity one plus two, yes, plus cx plus d over x squared plus two squared. Ah, uh, yes, I would have to take those two in account. So now we regress back here. I need to add those two. Uh-huh, and when I do, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna have a times, wait for it, x squared plus two. Okay, plus bx plus c times that x plus one, fun, all over my common denominator, which just happens to be x plus one times x squared plus two. And here we go. Here it goes. Ooh, ooh. Okay, x squared plus two a. And then over here, on this one, I do need to. First in or out of last time. Ha ha, foiled again. Yes, ah. Uh, plus b x squared, uh-huh. Um, that was this one, then that one, plus b x, then this one, plus c x, and finally we last, plus c, all over my common denominator. Uh-huh, x plus one times x squared plus two. Now, there is a way to um, plug in values. I'm not a real big subscriber to that. It is a lot quicker, but it makes a ton of, uh, less sense to me. So if you had a question on that, you might want to ask your instructor, or maybe hit me up and we'll do another video about it. Mm -hmm. It's about plugging in values for x and then getting a different system Yeah, with your a's, your b's, and your c's. But it seems a little haphazard the way most books go around and do it. They usually use theirs as a denominator, which I'm like, huh, why would you ever do that? Um, back here. Um, so then I have a plus b times x squared. Mm-hmm. When I'm adding my x squared terms, ooh, my x terms. 
Okay, did that one have it? No, it did not. So then, I'm gonna have plus, it appears to me that I have a B and a C. B plus C, X, and then my constants, constantly. Um, there it is, plus 2A plus C, oh boy. And then that's all still over my common denominator. I'll write it in, here it is, X plus one times X squared plus two. Ooh, so now what do we do? We set up a system so we can solve it. Uh-huh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna line up my coefficients. It appears to me that A plus B is one. Why? Because that's the coefficient of the leading term in my original numerator. Yeah, and also B plus C is equal to three. T he, T he, and then two A plus C is equal to a minus one? Yeah, those were my constants. Okay, so now I have a system. And I could use elimination, or I could use substitution, or I can throw it into a trusty graphing calculator, like this one. This guy thinks he's Beavis. Hold on a sec while I plug this in. Man, I was fat in that picture. But hey, I stopped. Whoa, whoa, threw it in the matrix. Yes. And when I did, I see this is gonna get me that A is equal to a minus one. Uh-huh. And B is equal to two. And C is equal to one. Fun. Right. He's like, wait, did he switch calculators? Ha, ah, I did. And you know what? These new, this is an old calculator, like 15 years old. Right. Um. They have partial fraction buttons, right? Just say expand, but whatever. Here's how to do it by hand. Okay, so now I can go back to my original. Mm-hmm, and after we solve this system, this fraction's gonna be, we can write it. We can now write it. If we had x squared plus three x minus one divided by x plus one times x squared plus two, Oh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be, that's gonna be, that's gonna be minus one over. Now I'm matching my um, A's, OK's. Yes, X plus one, yeah, plus, what's my B? <laughs> Two, yes, X plus one over. Down here, X squared plus two, oh. What'd we do? We decomposed that fraction action. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Fox and flower.